Hello and welcome to Apex Networks. This online tutorial module will cover PDAs for the PTS Crew Driver members. This module is part of the Apex Networks online training system for Apex PTS. We recommend you play this training video on a separate device to the one that you are setting your system up on. This will allow you to pause or rewind and keep pace with your progress without having to switch screens. Firstly, you must download the Apex PTS software onto your Android device. You can do this by opening a web browser on your Android phone or tablet and go to www.apex-networks.com. Under the software downloads, tap Android Installer for PTS. Once this is downloaded, you will be asked to enter your installation code. This is a six-digit code that can be found in the side menu of your PTS system. Once installed, you will be asked to register your device in the main PTS system. Setup, PDA Setup, and then PDA List. Here you will see the device in the list. You can activate the device by clicking the blue box. Mark the device as active. Give the device a name, for example, the vehicle registration number, and then a phone number. You may also want to tick the tracking box if you have subscribed to this with Apex. Your PDA is now ready to go. Each vehicle should have its own individual four-digit PIN number, which is set up in PTS Fleet Profile. For a crew member to log into their PDA, they will need to add their allocated vehicle, and then add the crew members from the drop-down list. You can add up to 10 crew members to the PDA. Mark the crew member that is driving the vehicle. The next option is for the crew to select a drug box. These are drug boxes that are used when treating patients, and contents can be monitored and recorded. Crew are then forced to carry out a daily check on that vehicle, ensuring that the vehicle is roadworthy and can be taken onto the public highway. The data entered here will automatically update the fleet management system of PTS, and any defects will be immediately emailed to the fleet manager. The PDA is now ready to receive work from the control room. The PTS app is designed to work in the background, just as long as the crew do not sign out of the app. If the PDA is being used for other functions, such as phone calls, music, etc., the app will continue to run in the background, becoming active when any job or message is sent. The main menu has the following options. The first is Runs, and this will show a number if there are any live jobs on the PDA and showing how many. Below this is Responder Jobs. This menu works the same way as Runs. There is a Vehicle Check button. Clicking this button allows crew to do another check on your vehicle if there is a problem, such as a bulb blown during the shift. Crew will also see an option to complete an invitatory check for items that should be in the vehicle. Both these functions will again generate a system email, and this email will be sent to the fleet manager. The Vehicle Shifts button will inform the crew of the day's shift, any planned break times, as well as an option to add a manual break time. The Employee Portal will access the crew's individual Employee Portal area. Tapping this button allows crews access to the rotor system and to request a holiday. They can also see if their holiday request has been approved. Drug Box will show all available drug boxes. If crew have forgotten to add a drug box when signing in, they can add the box here. Crew can also view drugs in the box and record any breakages. Any forms that are not linked to a job can be actioned via the Form button. These forms are known as standalone forms. These standalone forms can be used for recording incidents or accidents. Forms are fully customizable from the main PTS desktop system. The Add Job button will allow crew to manually add patient transport and responder jobs to the system. Any jobs created here will automatically feed back to the control room. 
Pressing the fuel entry button will allow you to enter the details when crew fill up with fuel and details such as how many litres, the total cost and where it was purchased. This will populate the relevant fleet vehicle details in Fleet Manager, providing data that will be included in the vehicle costs along with the MPG report. Messages will allow the crew to send messages to the control room and can be preloaded with messages such as taking a break, going for lunch, etc. Receive runs will force the PDA to check if there are any runs waiting to be sent to the PDA. In the bottom right corner there is the menu tab. The menu tab gives the crew options to log out, change the app sounds, change driver and finally to send error logs. The PDA will store any errors which can then be sent to the Apex support team to identify any issues that may occur with the app. At the top of the screen, crew will see a panic alarm. Pressing this button will notify the control room of your location. There are further menu options once you are in a job. When a job is sent down, you will see it coloured in green, along with an audible alert and a tick at the top, which you need to click on to accept the job. While in normal day operation, you cannot refuse a job, it will have to be taken off your PDA by control. Once you have accepted the job, you will see a number in the job button showing the number of jobs in your PDA. Click on Runs and this will open the list of jobs that you currently have. The job will display basic information about the patient, sex, if there is a DNR in place, authorization for blue light, infections and any cautions. Click on the job to open it in full. You now have more or less the same information that the controller has at their end on the full desktop system. Beside each part of the job, crew will see the job progression button. This button will change as you proceed with the job. Tapping the progression button when idle will reveal several options. Fill form allows crew to create an electronic patient related form and this is linked to the job. Crew can also add their notes and events to the job via the add note and event functions. Call patient. If the controller has specified that this patient requires a call when en route, the button will open the PDA's phone app and places the call automatically. When you are ready, click on the en route. The controller will have status notification on their screen when a job has been issued to your PDA, when the job has hit your PDA and when it has been accepted by you, along with the times. There is another button here marked navigate to and providing that the job is all ready or has been geolocated by the controller will take you to the job location using Google Maps. When you arrive on scene, go to the menu, click at scene and add your times. Once at scene, crew will see more options available to them. There is a cancel job. This can be used if you are no longer required to collect the patient once at scene. A DNR check. Pressing this option will allow you to take an image of the DNR and acknowledge that the certificate is present when moving the patient. Treatment. If you need to administer any controlled drugs to the patient, use this function to record any items removed from your drug box. Add delay. Crew can add a retrospective delay. Start delay timer. Pressing this option automatically informs the control room that you are delayed while on a job. Crew are reminded that they will need to stop the delay timer to progress the job. Clear job. Mark this option once you are ready to leave the collection location. At drop off. This is the time crew arrive at the drop off location. Clear drop off. This is the time that the crew leave the location. After all checks and forms have been completed, crew should tap complete. Depending on how your control room wish you to finalise the completion process, crew may have an option to complete a handover form and this is your last chance to finalise all aspects of the job. Once all items are completed on a run, the run will be removed from your PDA and no further action is required. To log out of the PTS app, press the red circle bottom right and log out. If there are pending messages awaiting to be sent back to the control room, the app may not log out first time. Once these messages have been sent, repeat the logout process. If you require any further support, please speak to the Apex support team.